For he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow. Yes, I am. That everyone does deny. Welcome to Under City Chaos in the Mind of the Comic Comer. I'm your host, MTR, also known as Matherat, and as always, Renee. Sierra Mist! <laughs> Sierra Mist is filling in for yes. Billy. Hello, Hello Sierra Mist. You know what? I like Billy a lot, but I like Sierra Mist in a, in a C- Little Caesar's Pizza a lot better. I know, right? I am Rat the Mat. Rat the Mat. That's right. You are the uh, the birthday boy. That's right. It is, was my birthday yesterday. I am now 24. I am also dyslexic, so. <laughs> and, you, and, we and we probably shouldn't have got him that store. cake because cake. he's also diabetic. No, there's I'm a joking. cake sitting here. Uh, and the pizza because it's very There's a cake sitting here in front of me, just so you guys know. I took a picture of it. It says, Giggity! <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't just put your name, man. I, I had to put Giggity. But uh, nonetheless, this week we're going to be breaking down the sixth episode of season four of The Walking Dead. Of course, this week's brand new comics brought to you by Renee and the beautiful people here at Undercity Comics. Also, the Marvel slash Fox Claws. We're going to see if we can pull out some characters from both the universes. Not only that, but The Flash will be standing alone. We'll get into that a wee little bit later. Let's go ahead. Let's hop into our show, you guys. How are you doing this week? Pretty good. Haven't uh, haven't talked to any of you guys other than my normal try to get here at eleven o'clock. And Mario uh, showed up right on time and yes. I showed up uh, ten minutes. We were 10 here at ten thirty <laughs> as per the text last night. Oh, I, you were really here at ten thirty. Was here ten thirty. Yeah, he Sue was not here yet. Uh, Shush, no, because I called Sue at ten thirty and she was here. So I just sat outside by myself <laughs> <laughs> in the cold. <laughs> I'm all alone. It is There's a little chilly today. Me. Yeah, I, I hey, like you're wearing it. a sweater vest, dude. I like it. I, nice. I'm wearing my I'm wearing my cardigan. I'm doing the Sinatra thing oh, okay. now. Okay, there you go. I'm you doing like the '60s rack pack. But I need those slacks. Those really tapered. They're kind of like skinny jeans. You know those slacks you used to wear in the '60s that like tapered down. Yeah, and then, like a really hard shiny shoe. That's what I need to wear. Now, that was their casual wear. You know, no, I want you to wear like what they wore in the eighties. Remember when like everybody on the of east course coast? I remember this. They had the really long collars that were like down to your chest. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The long collar looks. You know what's funny though is now I realize like now whenever you try to do like I'm gonna make a fifties costume, the, the people who make eighties costumes tend to mash stuff so stuff that wasn't worn at the same time is all worn like at the same time like, yeah so you'll realize that like whenever you guys when someone's like in 20 years and someone's like i'm gonna go as a what, what do you guys call this the zeros the teens hipster the double o's the double o's yeah i'm gonna go as a, in a double o costume and they're wearing everything that you would have worn like in 2000 like right now it doesn't make sense yeah it? no I kind of, no. I kind of want to be a, no, uh, no. I kind of no. want to be a '90s kid for like Halloween and just wear like flannel, yeah, flannel, and then like ripped, like not skinny jeans and just a really big, like used black shirt and we're, just have my hair all messed. We're up. getting way off topic here, but you know what? The last, the last ten years or so has just been stuff that ripped off other decades. Yeah, it really yeah. has been oh, like. Yeah. Like, we've run out of ideas. That's why I watch Project Runway with my friend <laughs> Tim Gunn. And uh, I'd like Tim Gunn to voice a superhero. And I'm then a, drop it 10 hi. decibels and who oh, yeah, are you? And then you, you, uh, what you do is you start with Tim Gunn right here, designers. And then you drop it like four octaves. And then your cat Von D <laughs> from uh, LA Inc. Because Chelsea and I are going to get married. And uh, I got to get this tattoo done. I hate then, to be vulgar, but like, dude, she being looks, with her, like uh, with a sack. Bleh. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm <laughs> done. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, why don't you just lay there, little man? Let me do the work. Oh, God, dude, no. Da- She's probably trying to tat you. Your, name, <laughs> your, name, your name's Gina. 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 <laughs> Down to tuck it backwards. Shout out Gina. Oh, Game? No. Uh, uh. <laughs> That's not, awful. Uh, anything happened to you guys over the weekend? Anything special at all? Uh, like, Any, anything for our Whack Attack segment? Whack, whack Attack. attack. <laughs> That's our new Nothing segment. Nothing Whack Attack for me. I just went to go see that movie, uh, Last Vegas. That was that. Whack Attack. Yeah. <laughs> How That's, was it? It was actually pretty funny. I saw it with my mom. But you had really low 
expectancies for it. Yeah, so when yeah, when you ended like, up laughing, you're like, all right, it wasn't well, as yeah, bad. Yeah, because like I was like, because my mom wanted to see a movie and she wants to see that movie Las Vegas. So I was like, well, there's Do still we a showing for to. Thor. I'm like, yeah, right. I'm like, we can still see Thor. She goes, no, I want to see Las Vegas. So I'm like, all right, and Ugh. I watched it. It wasn't that bad. It was actually a pretty good movie. Here's the thing. There's there's I'm getting to the age that. They're going to start marketing to me, and it's going to be like all this. It's going to be like Molly Ringwald and all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like that, you know? Yeah. Uh, but yes. um, the Breakfast Club you know, reunion. The thing, the thing is, yeah, right. The thing is, why do those movies have to be so crappy? Like, the, just the preview for people are your age or my age, because I'm middle aged. I'm not older yet. Like, when it has Alec Baldwin, he's like, I'm there. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm not ready to see, like, I'm not ready to see. De Niro like, is an yeah, old man. Like, my contemporary. So, like, Actors who are my age, like maybe like Nathan Fillion or guys like that, like you know, Gener- De Niro was like the generation before me. You know, Harrison Ford, all those guys were. But like can- actors who are my age, like that's who that's marketed for. Like people that are in their fifties and sixties now, like those guys. It's like we're gonna go see that movie. But why do they have to be shitty? Make a good one. Like make one that that. Well, is- did you see the town? Oh no, the family. That was Brando. Was that Brando? No, that was De Niro. That was De Niro. Yeah. That was when uh, his, like, he used to be in the mob and he's writing a memoir and they end up relocating him to, like, Italy or France. I and he, just, he just messes stuff. Him and his family just yeah. freaking go to town. Was it good? I don't know. I didn't I see it. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, I want to see. But see, it, at least it's something that, I mean, uh, uh, Martin Corsese is coming out with a new movie. Oh, with Leonardo I saw that. Yeah, yeah. Wolf of Wall Street. That yes. pretty good. And good of course, Mar- like, Marty. oh, man. I'm just glad that he's working with Leonardo DiCaprio. I re- I somewhat respected Leonardo DiCaprio back in the day, but he was such a, a teen throb sensation mm-hmm. that like I dropped off the wagon. But then he also did too cuz he didn't want that as as his image no. and he stopped for what 10 years? No, he no. made some key, but he he's very careful about what he's in. Like he'll only work with like you know, he did an Inception with uh, uh Batman, Chris Nolan. Yeah, and then Nolan, you know sorry. he did he does Scorsese. He did, he did Catch Me If You Can with Spielberg. Oh, oh one of my one of my favorite movies. We actually quote it all the time. Yeah. Go ahead, let's Two have mice it. fell in a bucket of cream. But you know what's amazing <laughs> about that movie is that Spielberg did was, it suck at doing it? No, well, such how well, late into his career? Well, yeah, well, dude, he was gonna produce. He was gonna produce it, and he was in between Minority Report and whatever was it, War of the Worlds, maybe. Like he was in between two two projects. Both those movies weren't that bad, dude. But I didn't like War of the Worlds. But I'll tell you what, though. But he just was like, well, you know what? No one else is doing it. I'll direct this and shot it in like three months or something crazy like that. Ends up being one of like his best movies. It's like, how do you do that? Just like not even trying. Like, oh, no one else is gonna do it, so I guess I'll do it for you. you I know? actually think that Kevin Smith is already wrapping up Tusk. I think it's only been a month of shooting. No, this is about the Elephant Man, right? No, Tusk is not. I'm kidding. But he did listen to. Isn't there a song called Tusk mm-hmm. by Fleetwood Mac? Mm-hmm. He said he just got stoned off his ass and like locked himself in his room for like three in his room for three days and wrote the script and just listened to that on a on a loop. Whoa! And when he brought it out, like everyone was like, "This is the most disturbing thing I've ever read." Are you scared about it? I'm not scared, but it has Justin Long in it. Hmm. You're, the, you're the biggest. Uh, you're the biggest Kevin Smith fan I know. Uh, I I am the biggest Kevin Smith fan I know too. I'm actually going to see him this Saturday. Hollywood at Babylon. The Hollywood Babylon at the Hollywood Improv right after Long Beach Comic Con. And once again, I'm going to try and do another interview with Scott Liddell. See if I could get my second one. I got to talk to him last time, but he was just doing a Q and A, so he was in and out and booked it. But um. That's coming up this weekend, so I'm really excited about that. But yeah, but come on, Tusk, it, it's somebody literally sewn into like a freaking walrus uniform and stuff. What? I don't know. It seems pretty disturbing. I kind of like stuff like that that like messes with you psychologically. Human, The human centipede? No, not the human centipede. It's not shoving your head up another person's ass. That does not interest me at all. You ever seen those movies? No. I don't. Oh, wow. I don't care to either. Why? Why would I want to? Why would I do? I saw it's glass ass. Do you know what glass ass is? No. Glass ass is this guy shoving a hole. I don't. Let's stop it right jar. there. No. And it breaks. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He paused. And he's stop. pulling out the glass. I, I saw that, and that was real. I don't want to see something fake, and be even more disturbed. 
Because I was already shocked beyond belief because my friends, I like, just watched it. I was like, I really don't want to. This is disgusting. He's like, just watch it. And he didn't tell me what happened. He just told me it was called Glass Ass. So when it happened, I was like, uh, and he's like, no, keep looking. Keep looking. Like, I don't want to. And, uh, and he's like, you're not really going to throw up. And sure as hell, man, it, it came. Mm-hmm. They, I don't know if they posted my reaction on YouTube, but I will never. Hey, you're not a man until you watch that, dude, because it's mildly disturbing. It is the most. I I don't I don't I think the the next thing that's more disturbing than that is probably viewing a, a rape, and then the next thing after that is someone killing someone, like hacking their head off. I think those are the only things that could be more disturbing than that. Is uh, uh, let's talk about Walking Dead, please. <laughs> Take my mind away from this image because it's coming back and haunting me right now. Let's go ahead, let's get into The Walking Dead, leaving it on a glass-ass note. Alright, this episode was really based on just the governor and what has happened to him previously yeah um, i think so far i would probably have to say so far in the season this might be a this might be my favorite episode really just because so it wasn't based on the prison or yeah because i i liked how they took a break from the prison and it was going back to what happened after season three well they used to do that in season three it'd be one about the prison one about woodbury one about yeah. the prison one about woodbury yeah like and then i just like lately i just been getting sick of the prison so i've, I've been I was glad there was a break, and it focused on a character that people hate, but also love to hate as well, too, you know? I, I, I'm not gonna lie, I think I've grown a soft spot for the governor. Don't bite, st- don't, yeah, don't yeah, do it! Yeah, I still think he's up to no good, and especially when he saw the camp at the end, like, watch, we'll talk about that more, but, but I Sue actually enjoy agrees. this as, yeah. See, with me, I felt like this, I feel like he might be going to the prison to try and like be like, all right, dude, like I did wrong and I'm sorry. Uh, I'm gonna have to disagree with you. I what think, do you, I think he's still? I mean, and then I thought he might have been feeding the rats to them, but then that technically means he's been inside the prison already. Yeah. So that that still doesn't make sense. Yeah. So uh, I thought it was an inside person, but apparently. Maybe, well, we're still not that, because they still haven't explained how far, what the timeline is yeah. when he met with Martinez. So, Which um, was a big shocker at the yeah, end, because uh, when I was, was watching it, someone was like, oh, it's one of the pits that he dug. No, and no, I was no, like, that's no, not, no, no, but no. it's the same style. It's yeah. the same idea. Yeah. So for that, I was just like, oh, crap. Right when he came up, yeah, what did he say? He's like, son of a bitch or something yeah. like that. I was like, ooh. Yeah, and... Um, so apparently they just bailed on him, because we were wondering, like, what happened. Yeah, they and just I missed, left him out there. Yeah, I, I missed that. I really didn't... I wasn't... I really missed the idea. It was me not paying attention, but then looking back, it's like, oh, yeah, he came out of the tent, and, and then they realized everybody was gone. Yeah, you they know? all left him. That was kind of shady, too. They are like... Well, they saw they saw him when the walker was coming at him. Martina saw him. He shook his head, and he's like, look, and I guess he realized... That look of like, this guy dude, wants I can't... To die. Yeah. yeah, this guy doesn't want to be alive see. anymore, so we might as well just bail. And, that's and that's really... I never even thought about it that way. Yeah. I, to me, it was just like, did you see what he did to our friends? He almost killed the hot girl, but we wouldn't know. We need to get the hell out of here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I just... You, I mean, I, why not kill him at that point? Like, why not just kill him? You know what he's capable of. Yeah, well, they figured that he probably wouldn't survive on his own. They yeah. thought, you know, just leave him out there with nothing left, with just yeah. his tent, and that's it. I watched uh, the, the, the post-game um, with uh, with the, the actor who, I can't, who plays the governor, I can't think of it. And he was giving a lot of the, the character's motivations as far as what he thought. Yeah. Um, obviously, he thinks that this character can be redeemed, but I, I don't think there's any coming back from that. I don't think there's any... Like, he's a mass murderer, and he's basically, you know, you're going to, you know, he, he was going to, you know, threaten. Whether or not it was because he was protecting his people, he threatened to rape a girl. You know, he beat up Glenn, left him to the zombies. Like, I, for me, there's no redemption for that character. I don't care. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. care how to ma- feed Merle and Daryl yeah. to, to the zombies. I don't, I don't care how many little kids he saves, which, you know, good for you. Who wouldn't save a little kid? I think, you should save but, a little kid. But, but that's but, the thing is, I think that I think they're purposely 
tugging on your heart right now. Yeah, like, because think, think about it. Like, I guarantee, I guarantee you felt like, all right, like he went to go get that guy oxygen. He didn't need to. He didn't need to get the little girl. That, he didn't need to do anything other. He could have bailed out. He could have been like, dude, I could sleep where I've been sleeping normally. Yeah. I could just do my own thing and not worry about it. But it's the fact that he did. And then on top of it, he didn't need to protect him. He could have been like, this is your own free will to allow your grandpa to be dead for this long. Because you know what's about to happen. I feel like... I, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead, Renee. Um, I think because that he did what he did was because he was, he, he, he was basically powerless. He had nothing left to prove. So I guess... In order to do that, he had to prove to himself that he was strong by doing those deeds, by doing those. And I think now that with now that he met up with the people, it's like a way for him to start over. But I think it's gonna go back to how he was in Wood. They're gonna find he's out gonna, the things that he yeah. did. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't yeah. think about that either. But I don't know. For some odd reason, I feel like Martinez might keep his mouth shut just because he's like, I'm the one in power now. Not yeah. I, the 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 fact that was alluding to was if they asked him like what made the the governor take that name and then you know the the actor was saying oh well he he saw it on the wall and you know it was such a monument to like the horror that it happened it's like no he took that name because he's a shifty bastard yeah and he doesn't want to let people know who he is dude you can't trust that guy like uh. that's the reason he took that name you can't but you know and I'm 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 also laying a lot of the character I know from the comic book on him where he's just like a psychopath. He's just, he's, and that's the big difference between the two is like in the comics, the governor is pure evil right off the bat, yeah, yeah. Yeah. right off the bat. When Rick first meets him, like literally, I'm not over exaggerated right off the bat. They pin him down and he chops off Rick's hand with uh, Michonne's, uh, uh, samurai sword. Yeah. Right. Off, like he says like three things to Rick and just, cuts off his hand then he goes so now you know that i'm being serious and i know you have somewhere that you're hiding so go ahead and tell me now he does it after the fact he yeah. doesn't even do it before he doesn't interrogate him just chops off his arm and he's like you see how serious i am tell me what's going on yeah, yeah. and then he beats up michonne and rapes her you know until she gets better and just does it again and then get her oh again. yeah and yeah. the comics as well i did forget about That's, that he's a horrible horrible character and you have to i guess i mean obviously you have to tone that down for for television but um, you could still give the idea of it like you could have like like kissing and her like tied up and then just a tear yeah and, and then, then it and like, then, like goes screaming maybe some scream but yeah like, or like it backs out, away yeah. from the door yeah. or something yeah, i mean and that's, that's always, it that's always something hard to you know to, 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 to it's really, a touchy subject. yeah it is it's obviously something that i you know i'm never comfortable with like the idea so those all that those scenes when he was threatening maggie in the tv show were terrible but you can leave that aspect out and you still have a horrible human being and um, I it's understand the fact that it was like he was almost there. Like the next step was rape. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because he was already forcing her to do things unwillingly. Exactly. And so y you can kind of convey that same. So for me to now them try to, I was reading in the um, the Onion AV Club. They they do a really good breakdown of The Walking Dead. They were talking about how like it's really been hard. Like the writers haven't been able to pin. Uh, the character down and like he does change as far as the tv show where one minute he's like really charming and he's got his shit together and he's got woodbury uh, woodbury going and then the next thing he's just like this murdering psychopath who's like yeah. who's like oh i'm gonna kill the doctor and he's the doctor's gonna kill andrea for me like he's gonna use the zombie he basically he's basically like a terrorist like he uses the zombies as a form of terror and he's also putting on these gladiator shows and all this stuff like who would do that like as a normal it's like oh they just need to blow off steam it's like no you don't need to bring drag zombies into it you know right I mean? you want to blow off steam just so th they have the little kids wear some rock'em sock you remember there you those? Go. Rock yeah, whole cans. Just yeah whole, whole cans, cans and just like poppers. something that doesn't really hurt and just have them jab at each other and it'd be cute too because you'd get like the little like four-year-olds and they're all like don't know how to coordinate themselves <laughs> so they're just missing it'd be adorable i'd watch that all day but no you're like let's get zombies in but don't worry it's theatrical because the zombies have like their teeth their teeth are pulled out but, yeah. but again that who would pull zombie teeth out who wants to sit there and experiment on like what who does that the, who has the, the zombie heads in a tank you know what i mean like who so you're obviously dealing with someone who's psychotic but that that's what they were saying like this is and like, then the fact that they still pulled in the tanks the fish tanks. Oh yeah, and then you know he's killing national guardsmen and 
uh, anybody who could possibly stand in his way. And so they're saying, like, but it's kind of like standing in your way of what? That's exactly. That's what the, I think. That's what this article is alluding to: the fact that he they, they, he's all over the place, and they didn't really want to make him a pure psychopath because that works in a comic book that you wait a month for, and, and you know, it's 30, but not something we thirty read. pages. Yeah, but. We got to give him a little something because otherwise it's a guy who's acting crazy. Mm -hmm. It's like the guy who, uh, well, nobody watches it, but the guy who plays uh, Count Vertigo on Arrow is yeah, yeah. awful, awful actor. Like, just it's terrible. So it's like, yeah, he's coming back, and I was like, oh god, do I really have to sit through another? <laughs> he was in one episode, but that's the way longest you, episode yeah, ever. Yeah, that's the way you kind of have to play him uh, every week. You have to play him as like the second one, which is awesome in the comics. Because you're waiting a month, or like when I buy the trades, it's like you're waiting for six months or whatever for the trades to come out. It's like, yeah, that works for like a hundred pages or whatever. All right, I got it. Power round. Who is the worst slash crappiest ultimate villain? Oh, that's a good question. I am gonna have to go with Lex Luthor. I was just gonna say, <laughs> <laughs> like he is. So cocky, and he is like so smart, but at the same time, he is like just ridiculously annoying. How do you, Superman? You're, you're, you're yeah, you're being defeated by a bald middle aged dude. Like, I always used to say, there used to be like, Superman is better than Batman. I'm like, Superman is technically a superhero that can't defeat a villain. Yeah, or, or Batman a is dude. a hero. That defeats super villains. Yes. Like. That's true. It's, I'm sorry, dude. And like, Lex, and it's the fact that he has money. If I have that much money, do I get to just like uh, trade around and do what I want Spider to? Spider-Man has some lame, uh, the Rhino. The Rhino, uh, yeah. Vulture. Um, there was also. Uh, oh, no, dude, I got, I told you guys in Scarlet, Scarlet Spider, they had Armadillo Man. Oh. And he was just <laughs> drunk. And, like, crying to see his girlfriend. Like, he wasn't even a real villain. He was just this, like, messed up guy that has issues because he looks like an armadillo. Ugh. And he's all pissed drug, like, I wanted to marry you, but who wants to marry an armadillo, man? <laughs> like, I felt bad for him. I would marry an armadillo, man. Yeah, if I went that way. But, yeah, Lex Luthor, like, how are you still around? Like, how has Superman not just punched you into... Space because he's still he's he has the Captain America m mentality like I have to remain good. Hence why when they came out with Injustice, it was such a good story because it was like what if Batman did? I mean Superman did switch. We were just talking about that yesterday. This is we'll we'll, we'll switch back to that, but after the power round. But remind me about the Superman Captain America uh, uh, thing because there is a difference. We just talked about this at lunch. That's what I do on my birthday. I go to lunch and talk about comic book superheroes. Did you record it? Uh, I did not. That was my buddy John Sandy, who's been on the show though. He's he's a he's a, he's a an encyclopedia. But uh, yeah, I go Lex Luthor. What about you, Renee? For me, I don't know. He's There's been thinking too. He's in there and he's rubbing his uh, facial hair that does not exist. <laughs> he's thinking about it. I'm Maybe literally thinking it about it. Like I don't know what though, because like. I mean, there's a lot of villains that I don't like. Um, and I keep going back to Professor Professor Pig. Oh, uh, Batman? Like yeah, I don't like him. Like, well, Batman has a lot of, like, like uh, the Mad Hatter. Uh, See, Mad Hatter, I actually like. as like I like it's Mad a Hatter, good Calendar concept. Man. I like Calendar Man. I like, uh, you know, all those cheesy You like villains. Victor Zazz? Yeah. Ah, uh, the ventriloquist. Ventriloquist. See, I actually like the ventriloquist. Uh, but you guys, uh, you guys recently looked up some crappy characters uh, on uh, Mario's back <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, uh, Fa uh, Faustino was, uh, we were talking together, he was just like on his phone the whole time yeah. going, every once in a while you just hear him go, Squirrel Girl. <laughs> squirrel oh, yeah, girl. Squirrel Girl took down Captain America. Yeah, yeah. Everybody and it took down Thanos, Doctor Doom. Everyone. That's freaking hilarious. Huh, what are her powers? Well, she's a squirrel. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's it's it. kind of like Rocket Raccoon. Like <laughs> Rocket Raccoon and Squirrel Girl should probably hook up. If you think about it, probably. those squirrels are pretty fast. All right, back into The Walking Dead. You said it was your favorite episode. Yeah, so far my favorite episode. So far. I believe it is going down a good route, and I can't wait. I hope it doesn't last three episodes, though. I think like, it's only going to be like, two. I think episodes? they're going to catch them up next week. And next week is not the mid-season finale, correct? Because they did no, not no, no, announce no, no, it. No, 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 yeah. So I'm kind of happy because every, every year it seems like you're getting so into it, and then they're like, mid-season finale. And you're like, no, don't end right now. Like, please, can we wait? 
We could go on. We could continue and then right? eventually get to I got February. DDR. Just right? do the whole thing, man. Let's just do the whole thing at once. That's what I'm saying. Don't don't they just don't milk cut it. me halfway. Yeah, it. it's like here's the slice of pizza, and then it's like, well, you get another one in an hour. You're like, oh, I don't want it now. <laughs> Speaking of which, I know. not quite I'm yet, you guys. Not quite like, yet, yeah. you guys. Let's go ahead. Let's get. Oh no, I. Uh, what did you think of? This uh, you know, what? I liked it. Uh, it. Um, it uh, again. I just don't like the fact that they're trying to play the. I. I hope they're not trying to play him for sympathy. No, no, no. I really hope. That this I don't whole, believe that one bit. But I think that him adopting his whole family and, and doing that whole thing is just. A, a, it's just a way. It's a cop out. It, no, it's selfish. I think it's it's a way for him to feel mm-hmm. like. You know, I mean, you kind of have that symbolic burning of his old life. You know what I mean? Like where he burns yeah. the picture, like he's saying um, goodbye to his old life. But at the same time, I don't know, man. Like, I hope it's not like, oh, we're going to make him like a, we're going to make him, a, you know, a, a, a sympathetic character. And uh, I, I don't want to see that. I want to see a bad, I want to see a villain. I want to see somebody who, I don't care what his motivation <laughs> is. You know what I mean? I don't need to go that deep into the character. I, right, you know, yeah. But I did like seeing what he was up, like what you know. I I did like seeing what was up. I liked that we followed him and like that. that yeah, yeah. That the guys abandoned him. Like I liked that. You know, it was good. Yeah, it was really good. Oh, we're gonna sing happy. All birthday. right, you guys. We're gonna go ahead and get in this week's brand new comments. Go All ahead right. and take it away. With run. pleasure. Nay. <laughs> All right. So this week we got one hundred bullets, brothers, Lono. A plus X, A plus X trade paperback, A Voice in the Dark, Adventure Time, Afterlife with Archie, Animal Man, Adventures, Avengers AI, Batman 66, Batman in Two-Face, Batman Beyond Universe, Batman Detective Comics Volume 3, Battlestar Galactica, Starbuck, Batwoman, Ben 10, Birds of Prey, BPRD, Hell on Earth, uh, Bravest Warriors, Buzzkill, Cable and X-Force, Catalysm Ultimates, Clone, Daredevil, Dexter, Doctor Who, Prisoners of Time, Fables, Fairest in All the Land, Fantastic Four, Forever Evil, Rogue's Rebellion, JFT Wonderland, oh that's a uh, Grim Fairy Tales, <laughs> I was like what was that? <laughs> Green Lantern, New Guardian, Grim, Harley Quinn, He-Man and Masters of the Universe, Indestructible Hulk, Kiss Me Satan, Longshot Saves the Marvel Universe, Marvel Select Classic Thor Action Figure, Mega Man, My, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, Red Hood and the Outlaws, Red Sonya, uh, Regular Show, Scooby-Doo Team Up, Secret Avengers, Sex Criminals, Sheltered, Simpsons Winter Win- Windig, Wigdig, <laughs> Star Wars Dawn of the Jedi Force War, Star Wars Legacy Trade Paperback, Strain the Fall, Superior Spider-Man Annual Number One, excited for that. Superior Spider-Man Team Up, Thunderbolts, TMNT, New Animated Adventures, Todd the Ugliest Kid on Earth, Trinity of Sin, Pandora, <laughs> Uncanny X-Force Trade Paperback Volume Two, Uncanny X-Men, Wake, Wolverine Max, Wonder Woman, World's Finest Trade Paperback Volume Two, X-Men, X-Men Legacy, X-Men Trade Paperback Volume One. Young Avengers and Zero. So that concludes this week's brand new comics. Thank yeah, you very Renee. much, Renee. We're going to go ahead for the special birthday boy. We're going to sing a little it's happy birthday. Disgusting. To our main man, 20th century. Hold on. I got to light. I got to light the candle. All right. All right. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear 20th century. (laughs) Happy birthday to you. Yeah. Now, before I blow, this is a beautiful cake. I took a picture of it so we can post it on on the page. But before I blow the candle out, it's very small, so the... The actual when I blow, all of my my all of the air that is exhaled from my body is actually going to cover the surface area of the cake. And I just want you to know, I was in bed all day yesterday with a stomach flu. Yay! <laughs> yeah! I wasn't. I wasn't. <laughs> I was all right. Uh, I have one more gift for you, other than the sugariness, carbness that you're going to have and probably get diabetes. Does it involve you being naked? No, I'm not going to bust up this question. <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> Sue went ahead and helped me out with this one. I really appreciated it. Sue. But we went ahead and, well, I guess I, we, if everybody Say it! In adult, <laughs> went ahead and got you the next Why the Last Man yeah! that you need. I was going to buy that today. What? Oh, yeah. Okay, so. So this is the next. Yay, Sue, so thank way, you for making me not feel like I was the only one buying something. <laughs> thank you, guys. Uh, if you're not reading it, Why the Last Man, Why. Is for Forget your... the last man. <laughs> no, it's actually like a Y chromosome, though. Get it? Like the Y chromosome? Yes. But um, read it. It's awesome. It's about the last man on Earth. And if you're a guy, you... I know what you're thinking. Guess what? Doesn't quite go down that way. <laughs> for poor Yorick. Um, so check it out. It's by uh, the guy who, Brian K. Vaughn, who also writes uh, somebody's... Somebody's... Saga. He writes but Saga he right now. He also writes a TV show. Uh, I think he writes The Dome. Somebody told me he co-created co the dome. It's a great book. I just finished it last. Um, I just finished the series. All of them. All of them. Jeez. Is it awesome? I cried at the end. Oh. All right. So I'm in for some tears. So thanks for that, guys. But um, he's was, finally gonna get great. a nut, and there's just gonna be a Thank tear. Thank you so and she's much. Like, finally. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you, Undercity. Thank you, Sue. Thank you for singing, Hayden. Um, honest to God, I have a lot of fun doing this, and. Uh, are you getting uh, teary eyed? No, right now? I just I you know I, I like I have fun. I'm glad we uh, we we all get. So I I don't get I don't get bad mouthed anymore on a superiority you always, complex. Listen, <laughs> listen, that is never serious. I hope you know that that is never serious. It's the fact that I'm the only one that knows it's not serious. <laughs> it doesn't count if the rest of the world everybody doesn't knows. know. Everybody knows. You got to be like I'm joking. Just say you're joking listen, at the end. Okay, Matt the Rat. Listen, listen, all of you listeners of the Superiority Complex. Which I might add, he does not post on his YouTube page. I don't have a YouTube page. I mean, uh, on his uh, Facebook page. No, you're, it's on there. If you go on to, um, you have to go on to the show page. You have to go to, I, and I tell this people, tell people this. The actual show page, superioritycomplex.podbean.com. You will find a link to Rat House Productions. Boom! Yay. I'm pimping you all Boom the time, son. Uh, so we're sitting like here. two dollar hooker. We're sitting here with pizza. And cake now. We're almost there. Don't worry. Graceland is just a few God, miles away. God, that pizza smells good. I know, yeah, it does. Let's go ahead. Let's get into Marvel slash Fox Claws. So Listen to this. They have been trying and attempting. Marvel Studios has been just direly trying to get some of the characters from the from the X-Men uh, franchise, which unfortunately, unfortunately Fox has. Which, if you don't know the history behind cinema... In order to keep your character, you have to at least reboot it or do something with the character every 10 years. I think one of the few that's actually up for date is Punisher. I think yeah. pun I think they've uh, failed to overlook Punisher. I also think they've failed to overlook Daredevil. Well, no. Uh, I, I, posted, I, sent, I don't know if I sent you the link. Um, Daredevil actually reverted to Marvel, and they're going to do a TV show. It's going to be a Netflix Direct uh, nice. They're gonna do a Daredevil. They're show. also doing the uh, we we did a we did a little segment on it last week with the whole um, Iron Fist and uh, yeah. uh, Luke Cage and all of them. It's gonna be four of them, and, and they're gonna do the Defenders, which is like the street level version of the Avengers. <laughs> and it sounds just like the Avengers, mm -hmm. the Defenders. Yeah, the Defenders. But oh, this um, cake is good. <laughs> <laughs> I just licked the candle. That's uh, okay. But the oh, uh, president of Marvel, uh, Kevin Feige, he actually said that there is a couple of gray zones and Quicksilver is one of the gray zones. Quote from the big man at Marvel Studios. There are only a handful of characters that occupy the middle ground. Iron Man is not going to show up in the over there at Fox and Magneto is not going to show up over here at Marvel. But a few gray points. Uh, there are a few gray points even after the many years of negotiation. Well, and, and that only happens... Oh, crap. The stupid show just went down. And that only happens with a character like Quicksilver who has been a part of the X-Men with but and is the son of Magneto in the comics but also appears in the Avengers. Hmm. Here's, a, here's what I think. And I, I think it's awesome that you're going to be able to get some guys that are going to be able to kind of do both. But I think the tragedy of... I think the the way the Marvel Universe stands now, we talked about it on the show before, is the you know Marvel's done a really good job, and now DC's trying to kind of see how they can kind of follow that that blueprint for success. But um, I think that Spider Man, the Fantastic Four, X Men, 
you needed all of those to work in order to kind of have the universe that we have now where you have four superheroes in one movie, like the Avengers and all that stuff. Um, it's just too bad that some of the characters are the characters you want to interact. Like so many of the X-Men have been in the Avengers or, you know, Spider-Man has been part of the Avengers. Yeah. So you're never going to get those characters across because they belong to Fox, which sucks. You'd think that Marvel by now would have enough money to just go, you know what? We're going to buy the rights to that or yeah. we're going to lease the character or do what we need to do. But you know, what would be funny if they had like somebody that like was reverse colored Spider-Man and he just swung by like, who the hell is that guy? Is like, <sighs> Who cares? Yeah. The man, <laughs> and then they the just continue man on. Of spiders. But um, I just, uh, I think the DC is in a much better position to get a lot of their characters. But they don't have kid characters. That's the really big That's problem. true. But, I mean, yeah, but I mean, there's a few. Like, I mean, Na- like Na- all right, other than, like, Shazam, wh- what else is there really? Oh, uh, for little kids? I mean, Superman. I mean, Superman's always... But you know, even when you watch the new Superman, your daughter admitted... Yeah, she was bored. mad. She, she was bored, and she was mad that he killed somebody. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know, man. It's it's tough, because you would like to see some of those characters cross over. And, um, but, uh, you know, if you want to hear something, an interesting interview, I, I, I know you hate the guy, but listen to last week's episodes of The Nerdist with Chris Hardwick. He had um, Clark Gregg, who plays uh, Coulson, and it was also screenwriter. Yes, I heard about that. And he also has um, Tom Hiddleston, who plays Loki. And then he also had Kevin Feige. But uh, they also talk about how, like, Feige's plan, like, this is such, he had this planned out so far ahead, like, how the movies were going to work out. And that's why that's why it's worked. The guy's like a genius. I mean, the guy's a, mar- you know, he's made it work. Um, yeah, the DC, it's not that DC doesn't know what to do. It's that Warner Brothers doesn't know what to do well it's just it's not that they don't know what to do it's just how how are they going to mirror the success of the avengers you know what i mean for thor 2 which people gave like middling reviews to really i loved it. i loved it i thought it was great i I finally saw it i wasn't anxious to see it because i read some of the reviews made 450 million dollars that's half a billion dollars worldwide dude did it yeah 450 million so I mean, you're gonna see another Thor movie for sure. You're gonna see Avengers two, which is now. You, you know, will not though see another Iron Man movie. Robert Downey Jr. will only be in the Avengers movie. And if he was smart, since he technically did do the contract for the Avengers mm-hmm. already, he might still have the backdoor deals on the other two Avengers. Yeah. And the, and you was, heard what he did right yeah. after the wrap up set. What did he do? All right. So usually when you do a wrap up set, the director, if he like likes you or is not a stubborn jerk he'll buy like the cast all everybody doesn't matter who you are he'll buy you something well robert downey jr from making so much money for the wrap-up he made everybody a, a replica of the iron man helmet that's not the cool part though solid gold and the eyes are solid diamonds <laughs> And no he way. actually, to a little kid that, like, I guess he was, like, dying or something. Something happened, and he wanted to meet Robert Downey Jr. And he goes, hey. And he gives him a box. And as the dad's walking away with his son, the security guy, uh, the bodyguard yells, that's real, by the way. And he's like, the hell? They take it home. He gave him one of the freaking helmets. He nice. gave the kid one of the helmets. I was like, don't let your kid play with that, man, whatever you do. Running around with gold-plated helmet. <laughs> Look who Come I on. am. I'm Pimp Iron Man. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the, I don't know how much it's estimated to be, but you can imagine how much it costs. I, you know what? The, the, that guy, the, the thing is, he's Coming smart. from the cokehead that he was to who he is now. Yes. Waking up in somebody's bed that wasn't his. Um, but um, he well, he's smart because what's going to happen is, if you don't make those movies anymore, the demand for that character, because he's the most popular of all those characters, will always be high. You're never going to get... You're not, you're not going to go, dude, I don't want to go see another Iron Man movie. You're going to be like, I wish they'd make more Iron Man movies. I'm going to have to go see this Avengers movie now. It's a smart thing to do yeah. because he's got the back door on those the next two Avengers. So, you know, he's guaranteeing himself himself as uh, part of the profits. Yes. And it just... He doesn't... He's never not a guy that makes sequels, Johnny Jr. I was surprised when they threw him in Iron Man. I didn't think it was going to work and uh, he was awesome. Sherlock Holmes. Oh, Yeah. I, you just proved me wrong. Sorry. And I might add, I actually rewatched. That just uh, happened. I rewatched. Uh, what was it? Uh, Shadow game. What was the Game of Shadows? Yeah, game of Shadows. Game of Shadows. Yeah. Still, 
I I when I rewatched it, I was like, wow, dude, like this is actually a freaking amazing. The movie. guy who plays Moriarty was awesome. Yeah, he was really cool. Um, you know, it took it took inspiration from the stories. It wasn't like a literal retelling of the the final problem, which is I might story. add at the very but it's end. Awesome. I don't think he was smoking tobacco in that pipe because <laughs> it looked very green. Maybe uh, maybe opium. But what I'm thinking is, if that's the case, I mean, I'd probably have to do this. I'd probably have to get high off my ass before throwing myself over a cliff well, as well. Sherlock Holmes used cocaine. So, I mean, they don't talk about it. That's one thing that neither of the, All either things. Sherlock or, or the or the new movies. I think with, with the movies, I think it's because they were being sensitive to Downey Jr. maybe. Yeah. I think maybe that's why they I don't think we want him to snort fake stuff. Yeah, no. He, he would, might pull the real would, stuff out. We don't know. It. He would, Sherlock Holmes would shoot <laughs> it, but he wouldn't. He wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't, he didn't snort back then. But at the time, that was legal. I mean, it was in, I mean, dude, Coca Cola got its name because it had cocaine in it. So, I mean, you know, but back into it, back into comics. Well, we're still based on it. It's not like we're not driving anywhere. That's we're neither not here to. nor there. <laughs> Firestar is one of them. She is known for Spider Man and the Amazing Friends. Oh, so, that's right. Firestar. Oh, that girl. I was wondering who that yeah. was. I was like, so she was in the Amazing Spider Man number one. So she is one of the gray zone areas. Cloak and Dagger, which uh, was part of. They were part of the Avengers. They were part yeah. of some of the tie-ins. So they're recently. They're about to get their Netflix deal. Namor, of course, um, was the first Marvel mutant. Douchebag. Uh, that's in true. Order, uh, um, Douchebag. <laughs> Gosh, why does nobody like Namor? I don't like he, Namor. He's known as the first mutant, so... Yeah, uh, he, way back in the 30s, man. He was actually... Um, he kind of goes against the Marvel Studios, but at the same time, they're still able to do something with him. Like, technically, he, like, led the X... He's, like, leading the X-Men, because if it wasn't for him, he wasn't able to do... They were not able to do Cyclops, Magneto, and all of them. But there is still the possibility, because they haven't touched in on him... That the character is still considered a gray zone. In I wonder universe. if he's a mutant because he's half human, half uh, underwater guy. I forgot the name of his. Technically, that is oh, a mutant. No then. In their in their universe, that is a mutant. And then, last but not least, Carl Carol. Dan Carol. Carol, Carol. Carol Danvers, formerly Miss Marvel, now Captain Marvel. So <laughs> she uh, she might be included in some of the Marvel movies. As well, Marvel stupid, and they're re, uh, they are, uh, they are, they were thre- saying that they were going to cancel, um, they were going to cancel Captain Marvel, which has been a great run. It's only been twelve issues, I think, and uh, or no, it's like up to like eighteen now. But um, they just finished it out for the year, and they're going to bring it back in two thousand fourteen. So get oh, okay. jump on board, get to pick up the trades because that's a really good story. Is it going to be a Marvel now because of that? I think it's going to be Marvel, now, Marvel yeah. now. Yeah, all new Marvel now. All right. By the way, I read the last issue of The Good, The Bad, The Ugly with Deadpool. Yeah. I sh- shouldn't have not picked that up. <laughs> yeah, you should have. Because I got yeah, the last part, yeah. so I'm like, what like, happened? Dude, why do you do? <laughs> why you so, do that? But, why you do that? <laughs> but now, I need, now I'm going to go and buy the back issues and, and get the whole story. I feel like we're going to watch uh, some Star Trek right now here in the shop. Is this our robot? I might add, I watched a, I watched a superhero beatdown. Who was it? The White Ranger versus Scorpion. That was good, wasn't it? And that was the White Ranger. Best fight, the White Power Ranger, my friend. Oh, <laughs> oh and nice. and it was the closest superhero beatdown. It was fifty-one percent White Ranger, forty-nine percent. Scorpion. Scorpion. Did he say, get over here? No, yeah, he, he, did. Did. he did. He did. Get over here. Uh, but then at the very end, uh, because the dagger knows I like, can sense evil and technically can control himself, like uh, uh, Scorpion disappears and goes behind him and the dagger just goes, Sunk! and goes directly into his head and he pulls it out and then Tommy actually takes off the mask. So he was the real actor. The real actor. The real actor of- oh, that's awesome, man. So yeah. It was cool. Like, and they actually brought him on to do an interview and they were like, well, who do you think will win? He's like, let me tell you why the white Ranger will win. And I have to admit scorpions, uh, uh the people that were defending scorpion had really good issues. Yeah. Like Tommy kind of didn't really have like, he had good points, but not enough to be like, you have the edge. 
But I guess the sword being able to take on evil and sensing it was definitely a big advantage. I had complete faith in the White Ranger. Did you really? <laughs> yeah, I was like... They're like, he guest starred. How are they not going to have him yeah. win? That's what I thought. I was, no, you know what? I, I was watching it, and then when I heard about it, I was like, dude, White Ranger's going to win. I just know it. Because like, he does know a, a lot of martial arts, you know? Yeah. He knows everything. And technically hasn't killed anyone, but I mean... He does now. He has now, man. Oh, yeah. The weird thing is, uh, actually, now that you said that, uh, I was playing Arkham Origins, and every time you think you're going to defeat a boss, you technically, like, can leave, you leave about 10 to 15% of their life, and then that's you beating them. Yeah, it's over. Yeah, Yeah, because, like, you don't kill them or anything, so I was like, oh, like, that was a cool take. That wasn't how it was on the first two games. Like, it was once their bar is up, their bars. Actually, they didn't even have bars, huh? No, you just had to get to like a certain point, and then they, yeah. they, they would kick in with the animation, like the like the the you know in game little story. Um, are you having any trouble with uh, Origins since they updated it? I had to, I got it uh, early on, and it kept crashing. No, Uh-oh. but but now my Xbox does take like ten seconds to like boot up after the whole like Xbox screen. How it's like Xbox and it like rotates around with the colors. It um you know yeah, it takes usually, longer now. Yeah, it takes like I thought it was my Xbox, but I guess it's just the, all the updates, man. <laughs> well, it's the it's the end of its life cycle, so I mean, I guess they're still gonna produce games for it. But what are you doing, Renee? Yeah, I'm <laughs> watching Star Trek. Right Renee, my voice. Okay. Yeah. It does not need any enhancement, okay? Da-da, this is what the people da-da, log da-da, on da-da, for. Da-da, to hear these, I might add. To hear these pipes. Thank you for the uh, beautiful uh, Veterans Day podcast. Oh, yeah. That was actually an interview I did a few years ago with my friend's dad, Stephen Haas. And uh, he's a Marine Corps veteran from Vietnam and uh, – or from the Vietnam War. And, yeah, I, I, he, he was kind enough to let me use that. That's actually uh, in an archive in Cal State Fullerton. I did that interview for a class I was taking in oral history. And so what they do is there's a huge project. They, any uh, there's a huge there's an oral history department. Any de- you can go to Cal State Fullerton if you need to do research, and if they have an oral history, you can lease you can rent it out. Um, but it's all done by students. They go out and it's they talk about a lot of local history stuff like that. So if you're if you're ever interested in anything like that, head over to Cal State Fullerton and go over to the oral history department. And they have they're in the middle of digitizing everything over and they were they were just starting to do it when i did that interview so they hadn't handed out digital recorders yet they were still using cassette which even at the time this is probably like eight or nine years ago even at the time that was you know pretty archaic yeah but it was the only way they had to get all these these uh these so they literally have thousands i think they have some like ten thousand interviews with just on different all local people on different topics the topic of that of that class happened to be war like war veterans so I did that interview with uh, Steve, and he was nice enough to uh, let me use it again for the podcast. So. It was very awesome. Not only that, but I love the intro for it as well. Oh, the little music. I got that from a public domain uh, music site, which if you're going to do your own podcast, guys, public domain music is very friendly. Just make sure you, you – Give them a heads under- up and give them credit. Yeah, you understand how to give them credit because you don't want to – like on my podcast, I know the guy – who performs the music? So he let me use it, and I just gave him a give him a plug once in a while. But yeah, be very careful when you're doing that because uh, you can get into some trouble if you use uh, unlicensed music. So that's our little tip of the day for all you podcasters that want to start a competing comic also, books podcast. Also, know that uh, we'll the, crush you. The you reason, bastards. the reason, we'll destroy you. The reason we're able to use all the songs that we are using is because we have something called the Fair Use Act. That's right. And God bless because America. we are because we're reporting news, if you report news or make a comment or are uh, being a critic on the song, you technically get to use. We it. love so, all the songs that we use. Yes, Boom. we do. Covered. <laughs> Boom. All right, you guys. Let's get to our very last subject. It is the Flash. Yeah. He will be. He's supposed to be appearing in at least three Arrow episodes. <laughs> I'll be watching those episodes. The only he, episodes he was, I'll watch. But he's gonna. He is supposed to. Um, they're can They're putting it down to two. It's two episodes now. Episode eight and nine. Ooh, that's coming up. And they already shot it. Uh, but the thing is, they do want him to be on his own show. So what we're going to view is we're going to view Barry Allen. Not the, Not the Flash. origin of Flash. It's just the character. Exactly. Right? Okay. Okay. So it's not like 
Uh, they might go into depth a little bit, but they still want their own pilot. They still want yeah. They want to do the everything Flash themselves, yeah. to have his own. But uh, that makes sense. Uh, Grant G- Gustin, yeah, Grant know. Gustin. Uh, if you guys want to go ahead and uh, Google him, you can see the image of uh, Barry Allen and what he's going to look like in Arrow. But here's the thing: is that they technically don't need to use the same actor when they start to do their pilot. So that's the real big question is oh. if they're going to use the same actor or if he's going to be different. Yeah, a lot of people so, were complaining. Wasn't it on here that somebody was it somebody in the shop that was saying they liked the Barry, the the Oliver Queen that was used in Smallville? Yeah, I think that was Billy that said that. And they, they were hoping that he yeah. was going to be the one in the, in the show and it wasn't. No, but the, everyone still likes the new guy that played Arrow in this one. Man, but I mean, I, I know you don't like the show, and I understand why people don't like. The uh, show. It's not that I don't like it; it's that I work. <laughs> no, um, no. Well, uh, Renee, Renee, Renee doesn't like it. I can understand why, why people don't, don't like, it? like it. Um, Green Arrow wasn't really a character that wasn't really interested in, to me. You know, I mean, I give the character a lot of respect. I give. I. I mean, don't get me wrong. If I watch something with Green Arrow, like if he's in an animated movie, I'll watch it. But like, I don't know. It's just. I watched. I tried watching the first episode, and it just didn't. I just didn't it didn't click with me. Didn't I'll, fancy. You know what? I will tell you what. None of the characters have anything resembling a personality. Right. That's the hard <laughs> part of that show. And you know who's even terrible in it? You know what's really oh. sad? You know who's terrible in it? The River from Firefly. She's not good. Really? Really? She's oh. she she's not good. She was better playing the Nell type character. This is our Barry the flashes, Allen. man. Yes. Um, they, uh, she was much better playing River than she is. She's trying to be like this older, like, like really like, um, like powerful, like corporate woman, and it just doesn't, uh, it doesn't come off. She's really stiff and really like. Um, so although her and Arrow did just do the, they, I like so they just did watch uh, Sports Center. Yeah, if you know what I mean. I might add. Oh gosh, there you go. Dun, uh, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, go home watch a little Sports Center tonight. Stop. Okay, we get it. This is the third time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Stop, please. Um, in uh, th- they're actually playing Firefly on like the Sci-Fi Network. I saw that. Are you watching I, it or what? I like DVR all those episodes. Yeah, yeah, I was like, I watched it, and it was the it was the one where like I guess the guy is holding the ship captive, and he's like, "How do you know all these things?" Crap, you're on my ship. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, "All right, all right, truce. I won't do anything to anybody." <laughs> and she's like, "Ah, oh, you got a pretty nice ship up here." <laughs> I started cracking up so hard. So, like, that made me want to watch it. Just the, it's a good, it's the a good humor show. in it and how dark it seemed. And he was able to just switch it around real quick. I'll say on this podcast right now, I have the biggest man crush on Nathan Fillion. So much. He's Is like, that why you like Castle? He's I like, love Castle. He's like your Harrison Ford. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a good he's show. He's like that. your Harrison Ford. <laughs> I know, yeah. He's, he's, uh, yeah, like Harrison, <laughs> your Harrison, like Harrison Ford, Ford was to my generation. Yeah. Like. Every kid bored between, I'd say, 1970 and 1980 has a man crush on Harrison Ford. And if they say they don't, they're liars. I used to have it on, I used to have it on Hamlet. So we got in that, Indiana in Jones, Han accident. Solo. Um, Dak. Yeah. Richard. Oh, big girl picking up over there. She's picking up My Little Pony. Don't forget to pick up the annual here at, uh, <laughs> at Under City Comics, <laughs> 11219 uh, First uh, Avenue. I'm throwing that out there because my daughter uh, is enjoying the uh, My Little Pony comics. My so. Little Brony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do not, if you're a brony, please uh, stay away from the podcast. But I thought he was going to say stay away from my daughter. <laughs> yeah, but you're welcome to come into the store and buy your comic books. <laughs> Uh, we we just we can't relate. We can't relate. This it doesn't mean we're not. We don't welcome you here at the store. Please come in and spend your money. Please just leave immediately. I think you're after. Kind of your foot in your mouth. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're. Joking. I just wanted to hear Sue. <laughs> I just wanted to hear Sue say something. Oh gosh. Oh, oh god. There you yeah. go. See, Fluttershy. I know who that is. That's, That's Fluttershy. Fluttershy. My daughter. I have no idea what it is, but it's adorable with by, its big. By the way, young lady, what is your name, young lady? Uh, Ashley. Ashley, have you gone to Build a Bear at Downtown Disney? Oh, and you can get the big old yeah. My daughter has. She's them so all. excited, yeah. She literally like giggled and shook. Uh, <laughs> she shook, yeah. <laughs> the uh, the uh, My Little Pony. Sorry, I don't. There you go, man. Uh, uh, do you read the comic? Oh no, but I want to get one so bad. Get the annual. The annual's right out. There. It's out. Right, it's right over there. Pick it up, and it's like the last. But um, I think Sue, you have the trades, right? 
for My Little Pony. You have the trades, right? Yeah, every six every six issues they do like they'll put them in one in one issue. Yeah. For My Little Pony. And I've I, never heard anybody try to sell My Little Pony. To she's try. excited about I, it. Yeah, I'm not saying it's bad. My Little Pony. It's not like I'm insulting. I'm just saying like I've heard like people like, all right, you should really jump on. By like, the way, uh, if you guys want a really cool comment, <laughs> <laughs> you already sold that one. Why yeah. the last man? Check it out. Uh, you know, I've heard I've heard us try to sell like Walking Dead to people. I've heard us try to sell Fables to people. This is the first time we've been like, you need to get My Little Pony. What? Watch My Little what, Pony get into My Little Pony. That's for kids. my daughter. You know what? Actually, I'll tell you what. For kid, as far as kids shows go, and, and I, when you have kids, you're going to be forced to watch a lot of cartoons. With yeah, your kid, yeah, yeah. A lot of shows. Adventure Time. I love that. I love Adventure Time. That's for stoners, though. Wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> regular show. Yeah, yeah that's uh, all it does. That's what I yeah, love yeah, yeah. about it. It's like. Uh, it, <laughs> Like it literally does I it like three times. <laughs> it says the regular show, then it says what it what it's uh, uh what's oh, the yeah, title of the show, look. then it says who created it, and that's it. <laughs> yeah. And I freaking love. Did you see it. the one like with Skips? Did you yep. see the one with Skips where his ancestor came back in time and yeah. his walks? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love how Skips just like the way he walks, like. <laughs> Oh, so and he's good. so wise, you yeah. know. He knows everything. He's like a million years old. Yeah, and like the recent episode I saw is when uh, Rigby challenges him to an arm wrestling contest, and he and then Rigby beats Skips, and he's like, "What? <laughs> <laughs> like how that happened? Really? You didn't like you didn't like the break dancing one? I like oh no, dance. not the break dancing one. I like the 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 rap battle. Yeah. Oh god. By the way, regular show comic book available yes. at Under City I Comics. I have to read that. Yeah. One one two one nine. I Never. actually had a chance to get the number one and a T-shirt at WonderCon. Yeah. But I jumped out of line so I could talk to Sue and Mike. Oh. Boo. Boo. Uh, by the way, you can do that every day here at <laughs> Under City Comics. It, it was, see them every day. Yeah, but brownie points. Yeah, brownie points. Yeah, okay. Brown browns. Brown, brown, brown. brown. But brown, brown. Uh, another show that I'm into that's a comic now, and it's a, it's actually an internet show. show. Uh, it's called Bravest Warriors. Yes, that's really good. My daughter I'm collects actually gonna the comics. The trade. My yes. daughter collects that comic. Bravest uh, Warriors. Do you, wait, do, does she watch it? On no, YouTube? I'm gonna start showing it to her. Is it funny? Uh, I suggest you watch it first to see. There might be some. Is it about the same as Adventure Time? It's and... a little bit more mature because they you know... one character like gives one person the finger, but they blur it out. Though. Oh, she knows what that is. Okay, and then they kind of touch on relationships a little bit more than uh, Adventure Time. Okay, like you know, Adventure Time kind of like. It. Yeah, look into it first. But you know what? It's sad is like it, she's nine. A, she saw a kid flip off a teacher when she was in first grade. He like got suspended for flipping off. He got suspended. I would have expelled him. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm you're, you're right. He got ex- expelled for flipping off the teacher. Uh, so. Hence, why I don't want my kids reading too much comics yet. If hey, I were to have them, I'm gonna read sharp. my kid she's Batman sharp. over a bedtime story. That's right. <laughs> this is what's gonna happen if you don't train learners to defend yourself. You must become like Batman. Your family will be murdered. Always be Batman. Yeah. <laughs> Always be Batman. You can be the outcast. That's right. That's right. You can be the symbol that this city needs. <laughs> Just you won't be the that. you won't be the hero the city wants, but the hero the city needs. Leave this cake alone. It's almost time. We're, it, Speaking it of which, uh, let's wrap it up. You know, the, <laughs> okay, I, I, I'm sorry, Fiona just, and but, cake. Okay, <laughs> no, okay. Um, you guys know who does the voice of Superman in the animated series, Tim Daly? Yes. yes. He has a it, he has a YouTube channel called the Tim Daly Show that he does with his Sam with with his son Sam Daly, and I didn't know his son Sam was the voice of Superman in the Flashpoint Paradox. Is he? Yeah. So I was the, I thought that was cool, but uh, my dad honor, I saw Kevin Conroy too. Was not expecting him to be the skinniest little puniest guy. Right. Where I was like, that's the Batman that's voice. The ba- it's funny because he is the honor- knight. Yeah, in honor of Batman versus Superman, I have to show you this to you guys. They did an internet video of where Tim Daly's in his house, just living it, and like Kevin Conroy is stalking him, and it's just, it's just they're going back and forth. It's funny. All you guys right, have we'll to go check ahead, it we'll out. Watch it after. Check this. out the Tim. Check, 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 check out the Daily Show on YouTube. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, get it? The Daily, yeah, the Daily Show. I get it. It's spelled D A L Y. Those sons yeah. of bitches. Those clever sons of bitches. Yeah. It's funny. It's funny. But you were you were saying that they were doing a show together. To, uh, uh, the son. Of yeah, the yeah. They they do a show where it's just like them. Uh, how the son wants to become an actor. It's just funny because like. 
Uh, the whole skit and everything, the first episode was that he was teaching his son to be a little less douche. <laughs> so, because if you want to make it in this world, inside the acting world, you just got to become a little less douche. All right. Oh, <laughs> That's so, freaking awesome. And so every, every single episode is like a little less douche. <laughs> Any comics you guys read? Oh, this go. Renee, go. I got something for you guys. Um, I recently finished Deadpool Kills Deadpool, which is the last issue of the Deadpool Killology. And it was really good. Um, but they kind of left Can it open. Can you spoil it? I don't want to spoil it. Uh, it's, well, I mean, like, like it kind of pans out as you read it. You know what's going to happen as you read it, though. Oh, okay. So it's it's good. It's funny. But they kind of leave it open to where they're going to. Are there any sharks? Yes. Yes. And there's a panda Deadpool. Ha! <laughs> And there's a yes. how Deadpool the Duck. Okay, in honor so of there Howard is the duck. there is apparently a comic. I don't know who makes it, but I've been seeing it at conventions. It's Dead Pooh. Dead Pooh, yes. And it's Winnie the Pooh. That's a uh, that's like a fan thing. Is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It looks pretty awesome. I kind of cool. want to. Deadpool kinda... is pan. Dead, 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 Dead Pooh is awesome. I like. I kind of want to read it. And there's a couple of issues too. Yeah. So I was like, hmm. Uh, I read uh, The Walking Dead. It was part two of All Out War. Mm -hmm. There still hasn't been a war yet. <laughs> still, <laughs> There's been so it's just like the show. Yeah, it's like the yeah. show. <laughs> like, it's leading up to something, but there won't be a war. <laughs> yeah, but it's going to be 12 issues, so okay. they're going to drag it on. And on top of it, I think it's only like 20 pages each issue. They're very short. Okay. But it's still, it's, uh, it has my imagination com completely captured. Uh, not only that... Uh, some things that came out last week. Uh, oh, and the, I did also, read the Deadpool one, like I said, and it yeah. was really good. I read uh, Forever Evil issue three, which was really good. I liked it. Oh, yes, it yes, was, yes. It, very interesting. I'm very interested. Um, I like how it's you get equal amounts in Forever Evil where it's not just focusing on one specific groups. It's 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 specifically. on it, specifically on like. The crime syndicate, and then like it shows the rogues rebel. Uh, the rogues. It's a little. It's a little dash. Uh, yeah, and, everything. and I like how heroes are coming back now, or you find out what happened to them after the Trinity so War. So does that mean that like when the Flash goes back, they're going to be like, well, well, we were already good guys. Yeah. We. You don't need to worry about us, Flash. Just go to a different. He's like, what the hell are they doing in Star City now? There's no crime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, big man? I'm reading a book right now <gasps> with actual no pictures in it, no pictures? but it's called like Marvel it. Comics, The Untold Story, mm -hmm. and it's written by a guy by the name of Sean Howe, and it's kind Sean of an un unauthorized biography going all the way back to uh, the 30s and Timely Comics and the birth of like Namor and the Human Torch. So oh. does that mean we have the introduction of the Stan Lee story? Yes, yes. and it also calls Stan Lee on a lot of his bullshit because... As beloved as Stanley is, he's also a shameless self promoter, and you know there's well, a lot. Of course, of, technically, come on, Stanley's Kamikaze. But I love Stanley. But he also he's a bullshit artist. I mean, that's but, but you that's, smell the bullshit. But that's but one that's of the, the, thing, that's one of the things what? that's endearing about him. And that is one big pile of shit. Break down like how much he how much he actually went into because a lot of like guys like Jack Kirby uh, went. You know, Jack Kirby died saying like, look. I, you know, Stanley kind of gave me the germ, but I'm really the one that, you know, and it's, it's hard because as you're dealing with artistic temperaments and you're dealing with things like that, where, where different guys are, you know, and they want credit, obviously they're artists, whether or not, you know, at the time comic books weren't well respected, but they were still artists. You still had guys who were with, it's with it's a tremendous like amount of now. talent. It's yeah. like that now. And so you guys, and, and like know. imagine drawing or like uh, penciling or something on a comic and then your name isn't on the comic, yeah. especially if it's something like Batman right yeah. now. Like they had a, uh, it was like Mike something. I forgot his name, but uh, I ran Mike into, Detective. Uh, by no. the way, great podcast. Uh, I ran into him at uh, WonderCon, and he was a jerk. And honestly, he's been doing a. He, I didn't know that he was doing Batman and he was doing the inking and the penciling yeah. for it. So it was like, yeah, dude, like, of course he wants his credit. Yeah, you know what? But back then, I think uh, you got to give Stanley a lot of credit for being one of the first guys to give. Uh, Marvel was one of the first ones that really told you who the inkers were, who the, all the guys working behind the scenes were. Because at the time, they would just throw a comic back, book out. You know what I mean? And Marvel and Marvel was really good at uh, highlighting their writers and their artists. But I think Stanley just rubbed a lot of those guys the wrong, the wrong way. Well, you Especially heard guys it, like Ditko and, and um, yeah. Jack Kirby. Because, you heard what happened with him, right? When he when he started working there, he, he, he was able to con the uh, 
uh, the the writers because at one point he'd be like, I work better at home than I do here. So it almost got to the point where you wouldn't even see him in there, but he'd come in, turn in his work, and he'd leave. Well, but they were they were also saying that his Stanley's real talent was you could give him any amount of work. Like he was basically he was somebody's nephew. He got the job because he was like the the publisher's nephew or something, and they like give him a job. And he wanted to be a writer, and he just used to drive like Jack Kirby crazy and all these guys. And they were moonlighting for DC. That's the part I thought you would think was funny. They were actually moonlighting for DC while they were drawing all this stuff for Timely, which later became Marvel. But um, Stan Lee kind of he caught him. He figured out what they were doing, and like instead of ratting him out, he's like, "Well, if you guys let me help you, I won't rat you out." So that there's like a lot of resentment there. So it's it's a really interesting. It's a cutthroat world. Yeah, it is. Man. It is it's a really a cutthroat, cutthroat world. world yeah. But um, it's a dog eat dog. But it's definitely world. if you're if you're interested in in the com- just in comics in general, and like it's basically the it's basically the birth of like the modern comic book. It really it really follows the yeah. even though it's only following Marvel. Uh, but it, how far does it? Where does it end? Do you it, know? it goes all the way up through. I know it goes up through at does least it go to Marvel now. I don't know if it goes up to Marvel now, but I know it goes at least up through the eighties. And it was written like a few years ago. So it's got to go up into like uh, I, I don't know if it goes into like the new fifty two, but I don't know exactly how far it goes. But it, it, if you're interested in the comics at all, and by the way, when I say he, he called Stanley and his bullshit, that's not to disrespect Stan. We love you, but you know he's like, he's again a self promoter, and you know he promotes Marvel, and that's he's, he's a salesman. That's his job. Well, dude, he does a hell of a job. I mean, you got to give him all the credit the in the world, dude. He created Spider Man. I will love him forever for that. But um, yeah, you know, I mean, dude, everybody, everybody kind of knows though that. And that besides, he, like, not to be mean, but like, it's it's like a cult following for like Stan Lee and Marvel. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. Just they just go. I did like his man. cameo in uh, Thor too. Yeah, that's oh, a pretty good yeah. Cameo. I forgot what he did though. I started laughing. Uh, he was. He's the, uh, he's in the crazy house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I started cracking up. All right, you guys, that. Is under city chaos in the mind of the comic. I'm your host MTR, also known as Math Rat, and as always, Renee Sierra Mist. Uh, oh, it goes up to 2010, I think. Yeah, okay, right in there. Uh, I, uh, Stan Lee. <laughs> Bye, Stan Lee. All right, guys. Tune in next week. Adios, know, true believers. Ah, uh, Excelsior. Yeah, can we get an Excelsior real quick? Excelsior. There was that was my little. Have a good one, you guys. <laughs>